in a position that was closer than anybody else just from by happenstance uh, that allowed me to look for some period of time at the president's head wound probably 18 to 20 inches away from it dr perry who was enlarging the wound in the neck to do the tracheostomy told me that the small wound in the neck looked like an entrance wound the head wound that i saw was um, a very large wound in the uh, right posterior part of the head. Well, where did you think the shots had come from? What did you think? But I think, even then, that I would have thought that this was certainly an exit wound in the back of the head, and that therefore the shot must have come from the front. I viewed the autopsy pictures. They had the frontal part of the cerebrum here in the skull out. So when the picture was taken, you, you think they pulled the skin back up over this wound? That's the only thing I can postulate because the back of his head was gone. This was a huge hole. Mm -hmm. It was on the right. It was nine to 10 centimeters across. Mm -hmm. And you could look right into the brain. Crenshaw. hole is at the front of the head. Let's see something else. This is just a, almost a personal object, a, a question. Are you pretty comfortable today with the notion that someone was firing at President Kennedy somewhere from the front? Yes. Are you equally comfortable or are you not comfortable with the notion that there is forgery of some sort in the official documents of this? I feel there probably is. I certainly could not be um, you know, held down to saying exactly how that is by, or even approximately how it is perhaps, but I feel that there has been some kind of uh, attempt to cover up what was going on. Let me show you to my best recollection what the wound looked like to me that day in trauma room one. Before each doctor looked at the photos, he described the wounds he had seen back in 1963. I could see the president's uh, head wound quite well, and um, I was probably looking into a wound that was on the lateral or the side part of the head and the back part of the head. Uh, it would be this portion of the head right here. As I remember, it's like this, that there was a big wound, big deficit in his skull and the temporal parietal area. Commission in their autopsy, they claim the autopsy showed a small little wound in the back of the head. Yet on the Mormon photo, as we go in, take a closer look, I did many years ago, uh, something very unusual you see here. Here's somebody else that has examined this. inconsistencies within and the pristine Mary Mormon photograph allowed me to go in and actually measure the wound optically without image processing. As we go into the wound and as we expand the wound and magnify it, you can see that the pixel elements or each one of these little dots is represented by dark squares or light squares. Now if there were no wound in the rear of President Kennedy's head, all of the squares would be the basic reflective value or the basic shade of gray that his normal hair coloring would be on this day. Every time, every time in my years of experience with this, when there is a concave or convex area that is a deformation of the overall image, there is absolutely no question that the case is as it goes darker under this situation that this is going from an, an area on the top of President Kennedy's head down into an extremely deep hole because the entrance wound that supported this exit wound was fired from the right frontal area of President Kennedy and it exited through the rear. Instead of trying to find shooters or gunmen in the photograph, 
tried to find shooters uh, in, the, in the photographs, and I found a few other things, too. Now, before these images were made, uh, were found, uh, the Warren Commission defenders had some, some little hope, some case, <laughs> to keep fending off reality and truth. But even, even with this truth before their very eyes, they're still trying to d d deny this fact. Now, is this the only image I've got of uh, the back of the president's head? No. I also looked somewhere else, thanks to uh, Robert Gordon, Groden's uh, enhancements of the Zubruder film. Uh, they were zoomed in some. I've zoomed in either f further, and uh, this is what I see. So we have two independent photos here, the Mormon photo and the Zapruder film, which both show this large wound in the back of the president's head. These, this is not words. The, the, this is uh, hard evidence, hard photographic evidence of an exit wound in the back of the president's head. Now they can deny that. They they could deny anything. Large hole is at the front of the head. See something else. This is just a, almost a personal observation. A question: Are you pretty comfortable today with the notion that someone was firing at President Kennedy somewhere from the front? Yes. Are you equally comfortable, or are you not comfortable with the notion that there is forgery of some sort? in the official documents of this? I feel there probably is. I certainly could not be, uh, you know, held down to saying exactly how that is, by, or even approximately how it is, perhaps, but I feel that there has been some kind of uh, attempt to cover up what was going on. Darrow Tomlinson, a Parkland Hospital employee, reenacts how he found that bullet on a stretcher. The bullet was ballistically traced to Oswald's rifle. The Warren Commission concluded that it was the bullet that had wounded both men and that it had fallen out of Connolly's clothing onto his hospital stretcher. The bullet was found here in this area. And not on that stretcher. That's the stretcher I took off the elbow. The stretcher he took off the elevator was Connolly's, so Tomlinson found the bullet on a different stretcher not connected to the case. This led critics to claim the bullet was planted, but the commission decided Tomlinson was mistaken. It was there when I came up. This is the bullet. Could it look like this after it went through Kennedy's neck and then struck the governor? But after the body arrived at Bethesda Naval Hospital for the autopsy, many problems followed. The autopsy should have determined how the gunshots killed Kennedy and where the bullets entered and exited his body. Dr. James Humes, a Naval Hospital pathologist, not a forensic expert, was in charge. This was his first autopsy involving gunshot wounds. It resulted in many irregularities. He did not examine Kennedy's clothing to locate and confirm entry and exit wounds. He did not dissect the neck wound to trace the bullet's path through the body. He did not locate the wounds with reference to fixed body landmarks. And he apparently made errors of several inches in drawings locating the wounds. He did not properly examine the brain, which disappeared some years later and has not been found since. He didn't realize there was a bullet wound in the front of the neck until he contacted the Dallas doctors the following day. By then, the body had been removed and re-examination was impossible. And finally, he burned his original autopsy notes before they were made public. Compounding these problems, the autopsy descriptions of the wounds were substantially different from the way the doctors in Dallas described them, as David Lipton explains. We have two groups of doctors seeing the body, which is evidence. Their observations are six hours apart. What did they see in each area of the body? In the area of the neck, President Kennedy suffered a wound in Dallas, which was described as an entry wound. If Kennedy was shot from behind, the wound on the front of his neck had to be an exit wound. 
But that's not what Nurse Audrey Bell, on duty in the emergency room that day, recalls. It looked small and round, like an entry wound, instead of larger, like an exit wound could uh, often look. The, the wound was about five millimeters or a quarter inch across, the size of a pencil, right at the throat, at the Adam's apple. That wound, Dr. Perry made a tracheotomy through. Lifton claims he was told by the Dallas doctor who made the tracheotomy that his incision through the neck wound was smooth and less than half the width described by Dr. Humes, the autopsy doctor. More significantly, he describes it as having widely gaping irregular edges. So the inconsistency here is that we have a widening of a wound which in Dallas was thought to be a bullet's entry. At Bethesda, in the autopsy report, their conclusion is that this is the exit for a bullet which entered from behind. At best, confusing. Dr. Robert McClellan saw the wounds firsthand at Parkland Hospital in Dallas. The wounds are consistent, I think, not with the bullet having been fired from the sixth floor of the depository building from behind the president, uh, but from somewhere around the grassy knoll or the triple underpass, somewhere in the front. Seeing that Zapruder film and noting the way the president was thrown backward violently to the left and having seen that wound, I thought to myself, there's no way that that could have come from the sixth floor behind him. And what of the president's other wounds? The Warren Commission's guided missile. The death of Lee Harvey Oswald played a key role in the writing of the autopsy report, as Weisberg later found out. There was nothing about the autopsy that wasn't unusual, including where Dr. Hume wrote it. Uh, understandably, he worked late at night, early in the morning at the Navy Hospital. Instead of going back to his office and working there the next day, he just got everything that he could and went to his, what more appropriate place can you have, his recreation room. And in his recreation room, he wrote out an autopsy report. He just finished writing out, this is his testimony, by the way. He just finished writing his report out when he hears on television that Oswald's been killed. Well, you might ask, what difference does that make to his report? There's only one sense in which he can make a difference. And that is, he knows very well there's not going to be any trial of Lee Harvey Oswald. He's dead. So Dr. Hume said he rewrote the autopsy and burned the original there. Dr. Hume's destruction of his original draft, later certified and approved by the president's personal physician, went unchallenged by the Warren Commission. Although we will never know for certain what the original report contained, the evidence appears clear on this point, that once Oswald was dead and there was no possibility of a trial, the autopsy doctors deliberately mislocated the wound in the president's back, a falsification which was essential to the commission's contention that Oswald was the sole assassin. did not even do a, uh, a research project enough to find out who all was in the room. Only those people who wrote up their comments or what they saw were called for the Warren Commission. And you being a young doctor decided not to write up your comments? I didn't like the way the project was being handled. And afterwards, when uh, everybody in Dallas knew it was Lee Harvey Oswald, and I didn't think so, I was not going to rock the boat.